So now we see that life isn't all about winning. The discriminator can only learn about errors being made. And the generator can only get better if it sees a gradient from the discriminator. So they both need to learn concurrently. If you want, the generator can only learn to be to not make the mistakes that the discriminator knows about. But the discriminator can only learn about the mistakes being made by the generator actually making those mistakes. They need to learn concurrently. There's a huge vanishing gradient problem. Now, like, imagine you have a perfect discriminator. In that case, the discriminator will always say to all the images produced by the generator, that's just totally fake. And therefore, the gradient for the generator will always be zero. And therefore, the generator can never be better, become better. Now, same thing with the generator. If we had a perfect generator, the discriminator would be entirely unable to see the differences and would again see zero gradient because it's just totally on the, on the domain where it can't pick up on any relevant information. So in practice, therefore, we do the following setting where we have a generator and we feed it with the relevant pre-beta distributions. We have real images. The, uh, the images being fed to the discriminator alternate between real images and generator images. So in each, uh, in, in many settings you have in each batch, you have some of both. Although there's some uh, some chances to optimize that. It goes to the discriminator, produces a cost, that cost is seen by the generator and being used to improve that generator. Okay, so now we will learn, we have this setting and we will use in that setting the learning for both of them according to the relevant gradients. Okay, now technically this is a competitive game. You can say what we are looking for is the minimal over the generators of the maximum of the discriminators of, of the relevant value function that depends on the discriminator and the generator. And now this is the expected uh, value of over the data distribution x of the log discriminator values. This is what the discriminator wants to assign high values to and this we have the expected value over the gener over the z's, which are the parameters that go into the generation of the log of one minus uh, the discriminator applied to the generator applied to z. And now this, of course, will only will stop once we reach a Nash equilibrium. Now, what is what is a Nash equilibrium? It's important in game theory. It's the situation where no one can improve the outcomes for them by doing anything differently. So that means that neither side can improve the outcome by changing its actions. So there is no change to the generator that will, will improve the cost for it. And there's no change for the discriminator that will improve the change for it. And any change in the generator makes it more detectable. Any change in the discriminator makes things less detectable. Okay, so it's interesting to have that link to game theory. Now, why is this gonna be hard? there's going to be lots of convergence issues. You know, like if the generator is too good, the discriminator doesn't see gradients anymore. If the discriminator is too good, the generator can't see, uh, see gradients anymore. There's instabilities. Now let's say the discriminator figures out a new dimension in which the, discriminator, uh, the generator can be wrong. All of a sudden, it will be winning there. It's going to take the generator a long time to figure out what that mistake is that it's toning in. And by the time it gets there, it can have already uh, moved on. Then there's the problem of so-called mode collapse. We'll be talking more about that, but we want to make sure that every image possible will be produced according to its probability distributions. And then there's, of course, the general problem that we're talking about very high dimensional statistics. Now, like we're talking about images in million dimensional spaces and in general statistics in high dimensional as hard. And we will see that it also is super dependent on hyperparameter settings and it feels very random. There's a lot of people who play with the GANs and it almost feels a little bit like a dark art where 
what works with what doesn't work depends on very minor differences on how we set up the problem. Now it's your turn to implement the full, uh, full GAN. Take our discriminator and our generator and put them into this joint setting where they learn at the same time. And then will it be good? And will the images be any good?